Так, я записываю. Всем привет, вы на канале Продкаст. У нас Хэллоуин, это у меня сегодня будет. Всем привет, с вами Анна Наумова, и вы на канале Продкаст, где мы обсуждаем продукт-менеджмент, сферу IT и релокацию в США. И сегодня наш выпуск будет на английском языке. И так как в США сейчас Хэллоуин, у меня сегодня очень интересный вид. О, мой Бог! Что это? Да, Коэм! Это абсолютно терроризирующе! Не понимаете? О, мой Бог! Это как nightmare! Нет, я байкер! Ты байкер! Я байкер! Ты как-то выглядит как Фредди Меркьюри. You look, you look like you're gonna go to uh, to a club for a, a 24 hour a 24 hour experience. It's a Halloween. It's a Halloween in oh the US. Gosh. Well, my gosh, Anna, you certainly pranked me. <laughs> my uh, yeah, and my mustache I, is just go getting out. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I don't want to put it. <laughs> So, so, so this this isn't your new look. Yeah, that's my regular look. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I yeah go to work and uh, hang out with guys as well on a oh dating my on my dating site. Yeah, I <laughs> know oh, that's hilarious. I love it. I love it. Are you, so, so this is your so this is your Halloween outfit for this Halloween. Yeah, for this for this party, yeah, I'm gonna be a male. <laughs> Oh, it's 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 great. It's it's very funny. Yeah. Oh God. Like... So, hang on. Is that is that your real hair? No, it's a wig. My gosh! But how, <laughs> so you stuffed your hair underneath? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of this way. <laughs> wow! It's yeah, now now you look like kind of Andy Warhol meets <laughs> Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Oh my god. That's quite impressive that you that you were able. <laughs> and today we're gonna talk about English language. And my guest today is uh Flan Barrett or Nat Nathaniel Barrett. Just <laughs> please tell me about yourself. How's it better to uh, pronounce your name? <laughs> and why do you yes, have two that, names? Yeah, that's <laughs> that was Good question. Um, well, basically, my name is Nathaniel, but um, my brother, my older brother, couldn't pronounce my name when I was born, and he called me Flaniel, so it became Flan. So that's actually, why I, I cannot pronounce you, Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Yeah, well, it, it is. It's a hard name to pronounce. Yeah, it's Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Was Nathaniel, but it's it's a tricky name to pronounce. So actually, it's kind of a blessing that my brother couldn't pronounce it and has given me this nickname because. Yeah, you can use you can use yeah. flan. It's Fl yeah. Fl yeah. flan is definitely easier for me. And flan yeah. uh, is my English teacher for a while. I cannot say how long. Yes. Like, I don't know, like six years, maybe more. We started having English classes even before I moved to the US, right? Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for a long time. Yeah. So uh, long time. tell me, yeah, maybe tell me about yourself and you have a school. So also tell about your school. Yeah. So, um, well, I started teaching in uh, 2004, so a long time ago now, 18 years ago. And um, I sort I did, I finished university and I got my my CELTA um, teacher training, uh, you know, qualification. And um, and then I um, I taught in in uh, in London schools, offline schools in London for about six years, um, and then. I left London and moved to the middle of nowhere. I was in the countryside in the sticks. And um, and that's how I found online learning, um, online teaching, I should say, really, uh, because, um, because yeah, there weren't any offline schools near me. So, um, so I switched to online tutoring in 2010. And, uh, and I've been teaching online ever since. And um, I started just as a, as a, as a regular, um, online freelance tutor working for for different um online institutions and then out of that 
I just gradually sort of organically uh, grew my own school because, you know, I started to um, to have sort of private students coming my way. And and then I I had more students than I could teach myself. So I started recruiting um, uh, online um, uh, freelance tutors to, to work for, for my school, Brown Cow English. So, um, yeah, that, so it that, all happened that's very actually gradually. How- that's actually how we've met because I remember yeah. I, I I didn't know your school uh, before and I applied for yes. some school like a, a like Russian school yeah at the time oh, yeah yeah and, yeah and yeah, you that's right right and then I, I remember that like smooth transition uh, um, yeah you told me that you launched your own school and w- would I mind to just switch to your school instead of that Russian school yeah. So I yes. it was you, yeah, I kind of hear maybe one of the first uh, students in your school, <laughs> right? Yes, it's true, it's true. You, you, you were one of the first and um, yeah, and it's, yeah, and it's, and that's one of the nicest things about this process is that I've, I've now um, had students with me for many years and I get to know them very well. And of course, you know, they're, I'm teaching them English, they're improving their English, but I get to know all about them and their lives and, and, and they get to learn about my life. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome having that kind of longevity in that, in that um, uh, a teacher-student relationship. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the second thing I really like having classes with you, that you, you actually went through my life for long periods of time. You remember my life in Russia. You remember how I moved to the U.S., how I struggled in the U.S. You remember my divorce. You remember my relationship with my ex-boyfriend. Um, you remember my job stories. You remember everything. We discussed all the time. So all my life, you're kind of like a psychology for me right now. <laughs> so knowing, I think, the more like, yeah, the most uh, about my life. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's but it's true. Like it's and and that's kind of the lovely thing about the classes because it's you know it's real English and we're discussing real things as much as we discuss grammar and other things. We're discussing you know at your life, my life, and it's you know and and so the English is relevant and uh, and it's so it's it feels like it's a lot more than just just uh, just just the English language itself and. Yeah, and it's it's been it's been amazing to watch um, to watch your move and to watch uh, watch you watch you flourish in the in the US and and um, and and you know and 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 make it your home and it's yeah it's been, yeah. It's been and thank been you great. thank you for your help uh, yeah definitely uh, your help with my English and also I don't know thank you for accepting the invitation to have interview uh, with me yeah. today today and yeah. talk about some mistakes and accent and everything else we can cover today during our um, short uh, one hour interview. So I know that you have a lot of students from Eastern Europe. Can you please tell me about uh, your experience working with Eastern European uh, students? Yeah, um, because when I first started teaching um, as 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 an online freelance tutor, um the first school i worked for was um was was a russian online english language school um and so almost all my students for the first couple of years were um were were were, were russian um and um it was interesting actually because i because i think i think you can you can correct me if i'm wrong here i'm not quite sure but i think russia um uh, embraced online learning early on when it became a thing you know learning english online i think russian people were really drawn to that i'm not sure why it became um a, a, such a sort of a fad or, or such as I don't, I don't know why it spread so quickly but it clearly became a thing um in russia and which was great for me because obviously i had lots of really um eager students um wanting to learn english and um and so, 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 so I feel a real closeness to my Russian students, um, some of which I've been teaching, you know, for a very long time, like over 10 years now. Um, and, and, I, and I know the sort of uh, the, uh, the, the Russian um, uh, sort of mistakes and sort of uh, inflections and, and sort of the, 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 the unique uh, uh, or common, common errors that 
Russian students tend to make very well. Like I'm very familiar yeah. with those. Yeah, and we will talk about it like shortly. Uh, just did you remember how many students overall have you had for like your um, teaching experience? I mean, like uh, students from Eastern Europe. Oh gosh, I mean, well, hundreds. Um, hundreds, hundreds. Yeah, because I've been teaching so online so long now. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I've had students from all over Eastern Europe, um, Russia, Ukraine, um, Belarus, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Belarus, um, uh, Belarus or Belarus? <laughs> Say again? Belarus or Belarus? <laughs> um, that's a good point, actually. I think you can say both. Yeah. I think I think they I think they're equally good as far as far as I know, but um, yeah, um, but yeah, Bel Belarus um, is maybe perhaps that's more common, but, Belarus, but, I mean, but yeah, yeah, um, I would say probably Belarus because Belarus is a kind of uh, old-fashioned uh, way uh, how uh, the this uh, uh, part of um, Soviet Union was called okay. like Belarus, but after yeah. like. Uh, separation it's like republic of belarus belarus oh so, yeah. yes okay yeah Bel I can belarus, teach you as right. well <laughs> yeah no thank you thank you very yeah. much and and, that, and like that's one of the best things because like my students are constantly you know sharing information with me teaching me stuff which is yeah. which is yeah so yeah that's a, that's a massive help yeah. Okay, let's let's switch to the um, um, topic. Uh, so, um, yeah, you already just touched this point that you learn a lot about uh, mistake that uh, Russian people and people from Eastern Europe uh, usually make. So, what are the most common mistakes uh, uh, students make? Oh gosh, I mean that's a good question. But um, in terms of in terms of um, in terms of Eastern European students, yeah, yeah, because um, um, my uh, audience, my subscribers, uh, are usually uh, people from Eastern Europe. Uh, yeah, so I, I really cover maybe like top three of the most common mistake people usually do when they try to speak English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I would say the number one most common issue with students from Eastern Europe is the is the is the R. It's the rolling R. It's the you know the it's the yeah. the, the motorbike R. Um, is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's an amazing sound. I love I love the sound. It's a shame that I have to with with my students kind of soften it and kind of remove it because it's actually quite a cool sound. Um, and actually, I'll tell you something interesting. In in Scotland, they use the rolling R. So Scottish English, they 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 the rolling R exists. Um, so if if I were teaching an Eastern European student that lived in Scotland, I might not try and remove the R as much. But usually, I give students, you know, like the sort of standard pronunciation, particularly of the of the the. the either the country they're planning to to, to uh, go and live in or they're affiliated with. So if, if it's the UK or, or America, um, the, the, the rolling R just doesn't like it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't exist in standard English. Yeah, so, yeah. That's why. Uh, like, it's, it. Yeah, it's very easy to identify a Russian accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like because of this rrr, and it's really yeah. hard to, to to change it. Yeah, I've been working on it like many, many years. So maybe you can give some advice how to switch from rolling yeah. R <laughs> to Yeah, no, totally. I mean, really, like with, with all these sounds, it's like a kind of it's like a mouth gymnasium. So you need to kind of just like you go to the gym and, and work your muscles, you have to you have to do the same with your tongue. And so so you can use different techniques, like you could say, for example you can put some words together like red rabbits run really readily and you can practice that red rabbits run red really rabbits and... run really, really. Uh, i want to do this exercise right now <laughs> show yeah. me exercise and it's it, it's it's tricky but with practice and really really um exaggerating that r sound so uh, red red rabbits Red, you can you can, you can learn to soften it. You, you can red, retrain the brain. Yeah, red rabbits. Yeah, I I just realized that I put my tongue something like behind, closer to my th 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 
What is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Back to your throat. Yeah, closer throat, to your throat. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And your and it's like the position is it's kind of like a hook, and it's yeah, and you yeah. move the tongue back um, under the roof of the mouth like a hook. Yeah, ruh, yeah. Ruh, ruh. Ruh, 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 um, ruh, ruh. but um. It's, uh, and it, but it's it's a common pronunciation issue with with not just um, students from Eastern Europe, but actually uh, like in, like in Japan, for example, they confuse the the R and the L. So I think mm. it's a weird it's a weird sound anyway. Like it's quite a sort of strange shape that you have to make in your mouth. So it's understandable why it's so tricky. Um, yeah, it's but really I do feel- like you need to train your muscles. That's absolutely true because it's not like common sound for Russian people, and it's so hard to pronounce. How like we, we we don't use it. We don't like never use that in our our life. And then I need to like pronounce this R and also th. Yeah, th also yeah. Some oh like- yeah, yeah. That's a really nasty sound because the yeah. sound the is the the th. Yeah, and, you, and you've got and you've got um you've got the th closed. And the th with an open voice, so then you then you've got these two things going on because you've got the tongue between the teeth for that, yeah. but then you've got the with the open voice. You also have to remember to to open your voice and make a sound while blowing through mm-hmm. your teeth, with your tongue out. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, but once it also again, look, looks weird. To practice it in the mirror. <laughs> Yeah. yeah it also looks weird yeah so any yeah, any well. other common mistake <laughs> mistake um, mistakes mistakes yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, mistake is mistake but, um, <laughs> yeah well the uh, another really common mistake for uh, well for, for all all students but um, and eastern european eastern Euro- european students would have probably issues with it depending on the word but it's it's syllable stress so which syllable do you stress how many syllables a word has and then the stress and it's particularly tricky i think when there are words which we share a really good example of this um actually i put it on my instagram recently it's it's the word colleagues 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 so it's two syllables um english we say colleagues um, the stress on the first syllable, car leagues. What the stress means you make the syllable a little bit longer in length, just like a fraction longer. That's what it means. No, colleagues. But I know, I know that in Russian, colleagues. The, yeah. Yeah. The stress is on the second syllable. So, colleagues. Yeah, but it's yeah, but, it's wrong. But yeah. You have to, it's all about retraining the brain, and it's particularly hard when, 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 when it when it's a shared word. Yeah, because colleagues. your brain naturally just wants to take the pathway that already exists. Yeah, or like the word something like very commonly used in uh, technology, like impact or impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, very much so. Yeah, and um, and that can be tricky as well with verbs and nouns where the syllable shifts. Um, but yeah, the, so the, the 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 word the the, the noun is impact right and yeah. the verb is impact yeah so yeah, yeah. like a great yeah. impact, impact but how yeah. how do you impact something yeah right? yeah okay to impact stress on the second syllable yeah. and impact stress on the first syllable yes. yeah 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 and yeah um uh, flan has instagram where he posts uh, a lot of videos about like with mistakes of uh, pronunciation i personally want to say mistake but yeah i know like every time i just correct myself mistake mistake yeah <laughs> i don't yeah. know why uh, it seems like uh, after 10 years of learning english i still have a lot of mistakes yeah no and but this, your yeah. english has come such a long way I, I wish we had a recording from when we first started yeah and if we could superimpose that with your english now and see the difference because yeah i mean it's it's yeah. incredible but and people program. ask people ask me why I'm learning English because I live in the US, I work in the US, my English is good. So the answer for this question that American people like uh, don't correct me, don't just like they they accept my mistakes and that's it. But I can uh, speak uh, incorrectly for all of my life because no one here in the US uh, would correct me. So that's why I need a teacher to like improve my English and correct me and say, yeah, I just pay for corrections. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, totally. 
that's 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 what it is it's all error correction and yeah and if you were to see one of our lessons like i'm constantly uh correcting you in the skype chat aren't i or the zoom chat and you can and so you've that's... got like you've got and, and and that's like that's 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 sort of that's key i think to 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 the to the learning process yeah yeah, that's really very helpful because I can see uh, um, my mistakes in the chat and then I can revise it. And for example, if I use, uh, yeah, sometimes I start my day with a lesson with you and then I just practice my speech, for example. What, what did I do yesterday, for example? Yeah. And then after that, I'm jumping on the meetings and just repeat the same with like a correction because I already practiced this in the conversation with you. And after that, I can yeah. practice with my, I don't know, like colleagues. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a good warm up, isn't it? So, and, um, yeah. Any other mistake you want to clarify right now, or we can just move forward? Um, what do you think? Uh, well, I, I remember you mentioned something that you found very useful, um, which was sort of, and it's kind of related to sort of cultural differences between different nations. And and I remember you telling me that very often people from Eastern Europe have a, a tendency to be more sort of direct um, in when asking sure. questions, and it you know and that that's just the style and and but in in english speaking nations it's we have a tendency to 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 be more indirect and 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 to be direct can sometimes be seen as being sort of less polite um in in certain contexts and yeah so, that, that's I mean, actually the great point yeah because i practice user interview with you and also getting feedback from users because i someone at my previous job complained on me that they they're afraid of uh, taking me to the meeting with the clients because of yeah. my style of communication and uh, i was super upset about it i called flan and said flan well, what should i do so my english is poor i'm super direct and straightforward please help me and we walk through the question i usually ask and flan corrected these answers and i i really applied that at my work and it was very helpful and uh, so kind of solved the problem of communication so can you give yeah. some few examples of this specific um kind of not mistake but just feature yeah yeah, yeah no completely it's like it's like you know like a classic difference would be like you know if you're direct, you say, what's this? Mm -hmm. um, and but to be indirect, you add like, could you tell me, could you tell me what this is, please? So you add the indirect question structure at the beginning. Could you tell me? And then what this is, please, you change the word order. But it's it's that 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 difference between what's this? Could you tell me what this is, please? Is the difference between being uh uh, impolite or possibly impolite depending on the context and polite so it's uh yeah if, you know if you're if you're with friends family of course you you can be more direct what's this it's not considered rude but in a, in a sort of formal work structure it's environment it's much safer to go to go indirect could you tell me what this is please mm -hmm. so for example i started our conversation with the kind of question, tell me about yourself, yeah? So to, to be more polite, I would rather say, would you mind telling me about yourself, please? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. If you wanted to be ultra polite and to not risk offending anyone, you would take that route. Obviously, in the context of this interview, you were right stylistically to, to, to use tell me about yourself. That, that was nice. But um, but yeah, if you were, if you were unsure and you wanted to guarantee being 100% polite, you'd always take the indirect route. That's a great advice, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool, uh, so let's maybe talk about accent. We already touched a bit some that R uh, uh, sound and a th, th, like that's like weird for Russian people's sound. So how important is uh, accent uh, and should it be improved or it's okay to have an accent? Um, well, yeah, it's another really good question because um, um, accent accent is important to a degree, but the main thing 
is pronunciation. And there is a difference. So pronunciation is, is how you say things correctly to make sure you stress the right syllable, use the right amount of syllables. Um, you, you've got the sounds right. And and the, ac the accent is secondary. So, you know, whether or not you have a British accent, an American accent, an Australian accent, a, a regional accent from the US, you know, a Texan accent, whatever it may be. So really, um, and, and and really, and when we're talking about accents with 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 students, we're talking about their their the, the accent from the country they're from. So if so, if you're Russian, you have a Russian accent. The only issue about accent is if the the Russian accent is so strong that it negates the pronunciation. It, it results in words being mispronounced because the accent is so strong because actually having a russian accent while speaking english is 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 a lovely thing there's nothing wrong with it um if you speak fluent english and you have a russian accent it's actually absolutely fine it, it, when you think about it people from the uk have different accents so if you're from london you have a london accent if you're if you're from the north of England, let's say you're a city like Manchester, you'll have a Manchester accent. If you're from Scotland, you'll have a Scottish accent. So having an accent is is you, you will have an accent from your region and your accent may change. So you you are Russian living in the US, living in, in Texas. So you yeah. Uh, and, I, and I've heard it. I've heard your accent develop <laughs> over time into an American accent with with Texan inflections. So you you have a slight Texan accent as well, and that's a lovely thing. That's great. So you've got three things going on here. You've got Russian, you've got American, and you've got Texan. And there's no need to remove or or modify any of that. That just naturally happens. The only thing I'm focused on is making sure that you're pronouncing your words correctly yeah. and if your accent is getting in the way of that then we need to talk about your accent so yeah that means that uh people should not worry much about uh their accent they uh, they should worry more about pronunciation and pronounce uh, words uh, yeah correctly right yeah exactly Pre the, the I think a lot of students get preoccupied with wanting to have a British accent wanting to have an American accent and if that is your goal, then then that is OK. I mean, that's fine. I do have a small percentage of students that come to me and they come to me specifically because they want my accent. They want a British accent. Your and, accent. Well, not my accent, but like, like, a, like, like a, they, they, they <laughs> I want your accent, Nathaniel. Yeah, like, give me your accent. They, they, I want to sound like you. And can you send me your hair in the post so I can... Uh, Look like you. Uh, no, um, I am. Um, no, I. I am. Um, so I. They want a neutral British accent. They want a neutral British accent. So, um, and and I, and I do help some students with that who have that very clear objective. But the majority of my students, they're not massively concerned about you know trying to sound as American as possible, as British as possible. They just want to make sure that they're they're clear and they're understood, and, and they're saying the words naturally. And I absolutely agree. Being Russian, living in the U.S., I've never experienced some problems with my Russian accent. I can say in opposite, people usually find it cute, interesting, like yeah. something like that. So, uh, and and nobody has, uh, uh, said me that. Oh, Russian accent, horrible, awful. Yeah, don't speak to me like blah blah blah. Yeah. So never. No, no. Yeah. No, not at all. I think I think it's something you know, that most people, you know, celebrate the, the di different accents, pe pe different people have different accents, you can pinpoint where they're from, maybe you can't, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's your identity. It's, and, and, and it's, you know, it's something which, you know, you should wear with pride. And I think, you know, um, I think, the I think the majority of students get that. I mean, it's, it, it's, it is, I, it's not to say there's nothing wrong with wanting to to, to, to have an objective to have a particular accent and some students do have that but um but yeah on the whole i think um um 
uh, you know, uh, ac accent is is one of the it's the lovely spectrum of color when people are speaking English. Yeah, yeah. So, but I I always um, uh, hear very often from people that oh, I want to speak uh, like a native. How can language English language learners uh, uh, can can speak like a native? Is it even possible or or necessary? Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I suppose my interpretation of that would be. To want to speak to like a native is to want to speak sort of with what well, your first aim is just to be completely fluent. So you're so you're thinking in English. And I think I remember you telling me about some that that sort of transition occurring at some point for you. I, I think it was when you'd moved to the moved to the States and you were like, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like it was like kind of magic. Like suddenly you were thinking in English. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I don't remember when it happened exactly, but yeah, definitely it was in the US, but definitely not at the beginning of my journey here. So no. probably when I moved to Texas, I started working in an American company. I started dating with American guy and like 95% of me, my conversation was in English. That's how wow. I realized that I woke up and I'm thinking in English. Yeah. So, <laughs> so probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So to yeah. speak like a native, you need to speak, right? Yeah, yeah. You need practice and then you start thinking in English. And then to sort of, I mean, to speak like a native would be to, to be using lots of natural English, natural in expression. So you're thinking in English. You're not, you're not translating. You're not translating from your, from your, from your native language into English. And, and, and so I would say you have sort of, achieved your objective to speak like a native when those things are happening yeah uh, you you will still make little mistakes with accuracy you may you may make a mistake with the tense you may uh, make mistakes with collocations preposition verb partnerships you know you're going to make these little mistakes that's not a big deal because those because those mistakes will be improving all the time and you know and and, and I've, I've i've spoken to people who have lived in Engl in england for 30 years and um you and and they still make little mistakes here and there but you know that's that's not a problem you, that's just the brain's going to make those mistakes here and there from time to time of course but the point is they are speaking like a native because they're completely fluent and they used completely natural um english um so i think so to to speak like a native is not is not to speak english without any mistakes and just and and to sound completely like 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 an american or a british person so your accent is indistinguishable from from theirs that's not to speak like a native to speak like a native is to be completely fluent and to think in english and to use natural english effortlessly and and that will definitely come with practice for sure so practice 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 right yeah practice yeah. practice practice hence yeah. the reason why yeah. you've been having lessons with me for such a long time because it it is it's it's just like it's just like going to the gym, isn't it? And you're constantly adding layer upon layer. Right, right. We we've learned like uh, every time we've learned some, I've learned something new, some new words that I've never used, some like uh, mistakes. Uh, I identify some mistakes and like everything else. So that's that's definitely helpful, and probably that's uh, why I'm here, like practice in my real life, and yeah. also lessons. That's just combination made me. Uh, uh, give, gave me a, a, like a boost this boost to speak yeah. better because your 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 um your natural english is fantastic now obviously you're completely fluent and you do think in english but what we are working on is sort of you're doing a lot of good work with um sort of idioms and un less common natural english expressions that m that native people know but you're less likely to be familiar with and so that's where you're getting the kind of nuances yeah. of, of the complexity of the language, which, which, which is that's the kind of that that's that's the that's the, when you, when you're a, a very advanced English language learner like you, that's the kind of stuff you're working on. And yeah. this, yeah, you mentioned really great points that uh, translating collocation from Russian to American. Uh, so. 
like for example now for example i was uh, uh in stress i had a lot of things to do and i translated literally uh put on fire so in russian is to shit pajare kind of like literally put on fire but it's not correct what's the correct definition of that like solving many problems at the same time urgency uh you, you're you're talking about the 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 so the the idiomatic expression when translated from russian just doesn't work in english yes yeah and that i remember i uh mentioned that like put on fire kind of literally to be a firefighter and uh, solve like uh, er emergency like problems but you corrected me and said no like people don't say that like in oh yeah 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 totally so yeah idioms are very uh, tricky like that and really each country has its own idioms and, and the translation just yeah really yeah works. Yeah, and sometimes so when to... I translate, literally translate Russian expression to English, that's confusing. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it works, but sometimes it's very confusing and people are like looking at me and say, what, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. cool. You anticipated my question a little bit about the uh, like uh, accent and uh, mistakes. How do native English speakers feel when they hear someone speak with uh, accent and mistake like do you do you feel like angry do you feel upset do you feel neutral what's uh, what's what do do you feel yeah i mean um you know you know as as it, as, as as english as native english speakers we're we're so grateful that you as a non-native speaker speak our our our, our, our language because um, you know, it means we don't have to learn your language, and and yeah. I, I think I th I think English I think English native speakers I can certainly say from 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 the UK anyway are quite are quite lazy when it comes to learning foreign languages, which is a real shame because learning a foreign language is an amazing thing. It's such a cool thing, but you know, it's amazing. But you don't have uh, motivation. You don't have any. Yeah, you just like everybody is speaks english yeah so yeah. Not everybody but like yeah the majority of people. yeah so you don't need uh, you don't have motivation that's absolutely true yeah we don't and so and so so when people speak english we are immensely grateful for that and uh and it's and it means it means we can communicate with people from all around the world because english is the go-to language it's it's, it's it's you know it's become the the global language so so I think I think in terms of you know non-native speakers making mistakes. I mean, we do, I don't I don't I think most people don't even acknowledge them because we we you know we we we're, we're so used to non-native speakers speaking English, so we're used to hearing mistakes all the time, um, and um, I mean I I I don't know I don't know what it's like as as a as a as a Russian hearing non-native speakers speak russian do you do you find it strange because it's less common to to hear a non like to hear an english person speaking in russian maybe if it's like a british or american trying to speak uh russian i can say that that would um kind of um so we would feel uh kind of respect yeah respect but uh russian people uh, are very intolerant for other russian pe people who speak with mistakes russian with mistakes so yeah and that's like a really um common situation when you uh, create a post on facebook with mistakes like grammar mistakes and someone come to your post and said oh that's incorrect but yeah <laughs> something like that <laughs> so that's like su yeah super common and how to pronounce these words is not like correct pronunciation blah 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 so we call it grammar nazi <laughs> yeah 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 you know, no, know we, we, we have the same term in english yeah the, the yeah. same term yeah yeah so a lot of grammar nazis uh in um russian speaking communities it's true with um with accent as well like I, I, um, a non-native speaker speaking English, if they have a strong accent, you know, once again, it's, it's, I don't think, I think most 
English native English speakers don't even think twice about it unless the accent is is getting in the way of of, of the person being understood. So and, 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 and so most students that come to me, if their if their English is already quite fluent, usually they 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 want to have lessons with me because they they want they just want their English to progress and develop and be as accurate as possible. So uh, I have lots of high level students who are already, you know, working in English and and they have and so so in terms of being understood, uh, that's not an issue. But it's just they just want to you know just just to to progress their English to a higher level and add more nuances and complexity. Um, you know, within it. Yeah. So, and uh, why this question is uh, very important because I've uh, I've heard many times for from uh, Russian people, Russian speaking people, that they are afraid to speak English because they're afraid of making mistakes. But uh, and they they think that they would be judged by non like uh, native speakers for making mistakes, but. You just cover that, that it's not a problem. Nobody would like judge you for making mistakes. Even like Americans here uh, making a lot of mistakes, a lot. Yeah. And yeah. nobody judge each other. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I really don't think that's an issue. I, I totally understand why a student would, would feel that way. And I completely, I completely get that. Um, And, and, and I think it's, and I think it's, it's 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 very logical to feel that way. But I, I c- categorically, I just the the only issue any English speaker would have would 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 be that they just couldn't understand the person. And if 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 things were getting lost and the com- if the communication isn't there, obviously there's an issue. But um, uh, I you know. I don't, I don't, you, you're not into football, are you, Anna? Or like, or you, I know you do, you watch some football, but you, I, I don't think you watch um, like Premier League or anything like that. But if you, if you watch English Premier League football, um, often, often the football players are, uh, are, are like interviewed after, after the game. And a, a lot of them are not native English players and, and English is not their first language. And there will be like, some of them use the most bizarre English. <laughs> And it's like, and it's, but it's, but it's, you know, it's cute and it's, and it's funny and, 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 you know, they're, 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 they're understood. They're understood, even if their English is quite, is quite basic. So I think that's a good example of how in, in English speaking countries, we're so used to, to non-native people speaking English, even to quite a low level that it's, um, there, there's no judgment passed. It's, 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 it's uh it's um it's just it's it's just it's kind of it's become normalized yeah yeah absolutely agree absolutely agree yeah. so yeah. uh plan you live in uh, uh london great britain like near london i live in the u.s and people usually ask me anna why do you have uh, english classes with non-american teacher but with british teacher so can you cover this topic that's like, is it necessary to have a, a, an American teacher if you want to move to the US? And what's the difference between American and British English? Yeah, that, that's such a good question. Because, um, well, I think the first thing to say is that nowadays, the differences between American and British English are, 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 are smaller than ever. They're, they're, the differences are very minor. Um, you know, we speak the same language. It's English. We speak English. And um, British kids have grown up watching American movies and and, and American kids have, have grown up watching British movies as well. So, like so like Peppa Pig, yeah? Peppa yeah, Pig is like, British. Yeah, Peppa yeah. Pig, exactly. And, and actually, our... Uh, so w- w- where where you do find the differences, which would be in some vocabulary, you know, like you know, soccer like and football, yeah, soccer, soccer and football, and football, like elevator, lift, highway, motorway, things like that. Actually, those words are sort of becoming fused, particularly in 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 Britain. We 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 you you hear uh, American words being used m- with greater frequency, but these words 
it's a few and far between really you know um and then and but, then you but know, even are... like for example like fall and autumn yeah in america is fall in uh britain is autumn if i call fall autumn in the us so everybody under, uh, understand me right understands yeah me. yeah exactly and likewise in the in the uk if you use fall so so it's i mean the differences are so so minor i mean that there are there are a few key differences in pronunciation with like like a good example would be um the word um uh root in american english is, is route route mm. yeah, they, they, that's the, the word r-o-u-t-e Route. Um, yeah. You know, like my 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 route to work. You would say my route to work. Yeah, I and, use route. Uh, route. Yeah. 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 And and because you're living in the US, I wouldn't correct that. So you know, if you're so any any difference like that, if my students living in the US, obviously I honor those differences. Um, but the differences are tiny, and and I think, I think most students. Are pretty pretty happy to have um, a, an English language tutor from anywhere in the world as as, lo as long as they are a native English language tutor. And in some ways, I think it's quite good to to expose your ear to um, different variants um, and to sort of and to be accustomed to different different accents, accents. And, 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 and and those differences where they come and, and come and go in, in 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 vocabulary or pronunciation. Because then you just you're just equipped for for any English language setting. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. I observed American accent because I live here and I use it more, but I have uh, classes with you. So I, 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 I haven't started speaking like you, like with British accent living in the US. I still observe um, kind of American accent. So, so yeah. for me, I don't see any problems of having classes with, with like teachers from different countries with different accents. So. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Cool, yeah. cool. So maybe to wrapping up our conversation, what would you recommend for people who want to improve their English apart from having uh, classes with a tutor? Maybe something else. I don't know. What, what should they do? Yeah. Um, you know what? Like we talked about earlier in this interview, it's 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 it's, it's practice. It's practice and. My mantra with everything in life and learning a language is, is clearly no exception, like a, 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 a little and often, a little and often. So, so how do you do that? How do you do a little and often with English? Well, the best thing I would, the, the first thing to start with, I'd say is, um, is reading. Uh, and, you know, if, if you're, if you're, if you read the news every day online, why not switch to an English language news website? Um, True. If you're, um, you know, I, I would recommend reading as much as possible. So read, read a novel in English. Read, you know, even if you think your English isn't good enough, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Uh, cho choose a subject, a topic that, that you love, that you're really interested in. If you're going to read a novel, choose a novel that you would have chosen in your in your mother tongue, but read it in English. And reading is so good because it covers everything, because it covers that your grammatical accuracy, because you're constantly being um, exposed to the patterns. And English is just learning a language is just pattern recognition. It's just remembering those patterns, getting them stuck in your head. And reading is so good for that. And, I, and I'm always surprised how few students um, read. Like it's, I, it always, I, I it, it's such an easy thing to do and to integrate into your life because you could read for just 20, 30 minutes in bed every day before you go to sleep in what, English. What, what, what exactly to read? For example, I, I don't read novels, uh, but I do read other stuff. I read, I don't know, news, <laughs> documentation at work, uh, messages, yeah. emails, I don't know, all the information that's uh, around me uh, uh, in English. It's all good. Like I've got students who are not into reading novels or reading, and but, they, but they're really into their work and they read lots of stuff related to their work. Mm -hmm. And 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 they they do that in english and that's you know that's massive that really helps so any reading all reading is good 
but but I'm sure most students can think about what they're what they're reading and what they're reading in their in their native language. And to make that switch to English might be a bit tricky at first. Like if you're suddenly reading the news every day in English, it's slower. Are yeah. you catching all the nuances that you would in your mother tongue? Perhaps not at first, but you know, you get used to it. And and you can do it alongside, of course, of course, you're not going to stop reading um stuff in your in your native language, but you can just incorporate some of that English language reading into your routine every day. Yeah. And I would recommend probably they start with small, uh, small reading, small text, like for example, a com a committing uh to to read a novel it's a big deal i'm afraid like yeah. personally i don't want to start even reading uh, a novel because it's too big so but i can read like article news i don't know post on instagram from uh, american blogger or, or like whatever you want so just start with a small yeah subscribe yeah. to someone on instagram and uh i don't know some news um, uh, media channels on instagram and read the yeah. news like very short very short like five minutes reading yeah that's easier yeah. to, than to start uh or reading like oscar wilde for example that's <laughs> yeah. horrible yeah i remember it's my childhood trauma trauma uh, uh when i started reading oscar wilde it was maybe 10 years ago and i couldn't do that because it's so old-fashioned <laughs> and complicated and why actually english teachers like in russia asking to read oscar oscar wilde it's yeah. horrible yeah it's, it's a trauma <laughs> yeah well, I remember that from school myself, just reading English language books myself, like um, that we were set the syllabus, yeah, you know, tricky yeah. books. It, yeah, it, 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 it can put you off. But, 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 but you made a really good point. And like, like just social media is such a good way in because as long as you're following English language, um, uh, social, social, um, um, social media users, little sound bites, you're getting loads of natural English there. Like Twitter is great for your, for your English. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And, and yeah, and, and you know, and, and then you're continually just dropping in and out of, of, of your English because we use our phones all the time, just to, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. It's a great way to do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I can also recommend watching uh, movies in English. Uh, there are a lot of American movies that like in Russia, it's translated to Russian. So just start watching these movies in English in their native language. First, it's cool because you can hear the actor's voice, a real voice, not just translator. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, but the, uh, the the real actor's voice, that's cool. And the second, you can practice listening. That's also important. I personally struggled a lot when I moved to the US. I got used to your accent. I got used to some, I don't know, speakers uh, uh, and sales managers, uh, what I worked with, but I didn't, uh, I wasn't get used to uh, the uh, real people on the street, how they yeah. speak. I could yeah, not yeah. understand people because I, yeah, I just, yeah, I didn't hear uh, like such a variety of accents. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. highly recommend watching movies in English, listening to podcasts in English, watching YouTube's bloggers, interviews, real people, not just like that that uh, speakers so that who yeah. speak very clearly like professional speakers. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. like definitely helpful. Yeah, that's that's such a good point. Like in terms of regional accents, different accents, and 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 the slang. There's so much slang, slang that's yeah. going on, and 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 yeah, movies are just perfect for that, aren't they? And you could, yeah, with 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 the with the um with the with the subtitles, subtitles on, particularly when yeah. Yeah, when on in English English subtitles. Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, and and uh, yeah, and and if you could if you could. If you get get into a TV series, once again, choose choose stuff that you're really into, but do it do it in English, English subtitles on, and yeah, you're away. It's a massive help. Yeah, and also yeah, that's uh, the, the maybe third a tricky part. So like first is reading, the second is listening, and the third is like speaking itself. That's probably the hardest part because when you live in yeah, when you live in the U.S., for example, you can go outside and speak to uh, like uh, strangers, so that's okay. But if you live in Russia or Ukraine or Belarus, you cannot find a partner to practice your English, especially native. So yeah, for this case, I I, I put to 
together some links with online, uh, I don't know, online groups, uh, some resources when you can find a partner just to practice like the same body who is like learning or maybe just can help you with uh, your English, someone else. So you can at least you can practice online for someone else. I think that's that's missing part. Uh, very, very yeah, important. Yeah, so that's great. Like um, I, I've had students who who um, I, 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 they're, they're, they're living with their partner or, or a flatmate and they're both learning, um, both learning English um, with me or, 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 or certainly they both speak English. And I and I encourage them to to try and like for, for 15 minutes a day yeah, more, if you can, to create an English only environment where you just communicate in English. So even even if you're even even if it's with um with a with a with a with a person who's who's non-native, just just to access that part of your brain and just to to give you the practice of speaking in English um, every day is is a great is is a really great habit. So you you can do that. You can incorporate it into your your home life with your partner every night <laughs> from six to seven. We we talk to each other only in English. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely, yeah, absolutely agree because it's uh, like speaking is the same like a muscle war. So to start, like you need to kind of unblock your muscles and start speaking like a different language. And uh, usually like at the beginning, people have a lot of barriers, frictions to start even speaking because it's so weird. Yeah. yeah. Like how to use your mouth, like how to just like sounds, everything is just speaking. Yeah. With someone, it definitely needs like, to, to just push to start and do that like uh, yeah. regardless who who it is who this person is like you're speaking with so yeah yeah i i agree i agree, I agree. so um yeah uh, let's maybe uh, stop uh, that and uh uh, Flan, I know that you send me a lot of useful links for books, services, as well as a um, uh, link to your school. I definitely attach uh, to this interview. And uh, uh, if um, anyone wants to join classes with Flan, I highly recommend. I really like this teacher. And that's why I, I've been paying for uh, many, many years, <laughs> paying money, real money for her. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's worth it definitely um so links uh, in the description to this video so probably i attach it also to the uh, comments to this um interview uh thank you so much flan for that like super helpful conversation i hope this information wow. will help uh someone to uh, uh, improve their english to unblock their like uh, speaking uh, ability <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Anna. yeah it's been my absolute pleasure yeah and for, like i'm just taking my hat <laughs> <laughs> it's like mine if i if i cut my i should cut my hair short and join you <laughs> yeah. yeah i really look like a like celebrity i don't know who's that like, even girl or boy i have no idea <laughs> yeah i love it it's hilarious yeah yeah so, okay Amazing. yeah okay right. thanks everyone Cheers, thanks, yeah, yeah have fun <laughs>